Hi everyone, welcome to another video by Stock Trades. This week, we're going to look at top stocks for the month of August. We're taking a different approach. We're going to look at those that are, in our opinion, undervalued. But before we get into that, last week we hit 5,000 subscribers. It's a pretty significant milestone and one that we are particularly proud of. A big thanks to all of you who have joined us and who are supporting us. The It has been overwhelming, so a big thanks. To celebrate, we decided that we were going to give away two full year memberships to Stock Trades Premium. So with that in mind, we ran a contest and I'm proud to announce and very excited to announce our winners today. And we're gonna do that right after this. Okay, I'm not gonna delay it any longer. Our two winners of our full year Stock Trades Premium subscriptions are Robert G and L Gorman. Congratulations to the both of you. Your support is much appreciated and we look forward to joining you on Stock Trades Premium. Because of the strong interest in Stock Trades Premium, we've also decided to provide a little something for those who didn't win. Over the next 24 hours, we are going to offer a full year subscription to Stock Trades Premium at a 50% discount. I'm flashing the code on the screen right now. We are also going to post this code and the link to claim this discount in the description of this video. But don't hesitate. This is only going to last for 24 hours. I can't stress this enough. It's the first time we've done this. It's a celebratory mood and we just want to say thank you to all our YouTube subs. And with that, let's get into our top stocks for the month of August. When I think of stocks that are undervalued, one of the first set that comes to mind are Canada's big banks. Not surprisingly, the economic uh, conditions aren't exactly set up for the banks to do well. Low oil prices are hurting those with exposure to Western Canada and low interest rates are just overall going to impact profitability. Couple that with higher provision for credit losses and big banks are struggling. The one bank I want to bring attention to today is the Bank of Montreal. The Bank of Montreal has typically been a middle of the pack bank. Uh, over the past 5-10 years, the bank has consistently been middle of the pack in terms of performance. This year, however, it is trailing all of its peers. It is down 27% year to date, and it is trailing some of its peers by a pretty significant margin. Historically, the worst performing Big Five bank tends to outperform in the months and the years that follow. This means that a company like the Bank of Montreal is well positioned to outperform over the short term. This is not surprising. The company is the worst performing bank, and now it is one of the best valued banks in the country. If you look, take a quick look at this fast graph chart, you'll see that the Bank of Montreal is currently trading at a pretty significant discount to its historical price to earnings ratio of approximately 11.8 times earnings. Although this is great, it is also somewhat misleading. Remember, the price to earnings ratio is based on historical performance. Given the impacts of COVID-19, we know that the outlook for banks looks much worse. If you look at the company price to earnings ratio when compared to next year's earnings or even 2020 earnings, you'll see that it looks a lot different. That being said, it is still one of only two banks that is trading at a discount to its blended PE ratio, which takes into account the actuals and estimates for the remainder of the year. So one of only two companies is trading at approximately 8% discount to its full year 2020 earnings. When looking at year 2021 and 2022, you'll see that the bank looks quite cheap. Don't expect much out of Canada's big banks over the short to medium term. However, we believe now is a perfect time to start accumulating shares, especially in stocks such as the Bank of Montreal, which are trading at a pretty big discount to historical valuations. The Bank of Montreal reports earnings on August 26th and is something that investors will want to pay attention to. In keeping with the theme of financials, if you will, there is another industry that is underperforming the markets in quite a big way, and that is the insurance industry. Today, we're going to look at Sun Life Financial. If you thought Canada's big banks were struggling, take a quick look at this chart from Bloomberg. As you'll see, Canada's life goals are also struggling in 2020. In fact, they are among the worst performing industries on the TSX index. In terms of outlook, analysts are expecting double digit declines in growth for Canada's life goals. Sun Life Financial, for its part, are expected to see an 8% drop in earnings in 2020 before rebounding by approximately 12% in 2021. This is actually better than the industry average and is likely why the company is outperforming. If you look at this chart compared to their peers, Sun Life Financial is outperforming in a big way. Manulife Financial, Great West Life, and Industrial Alliance are all underperforming Sun Life Financial. 
If you're worried that Sun Life's recent outperformance might lead to underperformance moving forward, don't be. The company is still significantly undervalued. Take a look at this fast graph chart. It is trading at a double digit discount to its historical valuations. Likewise, the company is one of the most reliable insurance stocks on the TSX index. Over the past 12 quarters, the company has beat estimates 10 times and twice the company was in line. It hasn't missed estimates once in three years. This means that the company's upcoming earnings, which is scheduled for August 6th, is likely to be a beat or in line with expectations. This is likely to send the company's share price upwards. Considering IAG last week reported earnings in which it beat estimates, we have confidence that Sun Life is well positioned for a beat this coming week as well. In our opinion, Sun Life is going to continue being one of the top performing insurance companies and given current valuations has significant upside over the next couple of years. Our last pick for the month of August is one that's going to require some patience and that is CAE. CAE is a global leader in civil aviation training solutions. It also has two other segments, which is the defense and healthcare segments. The company has been hard hit during this pandemic. Not surprising, the entire airline industry and demand for air travel has cratered. Year to date, the company's share price is down by approximately 41%. However, we believe that the company is well positioned to see significant upside once the industry and the aviation industry rebounds. The company's 40% drop, given the current market dynamics, is somewhat justified. If you take a look at this revenue breakdown, you'll see that approximately 60% of the company's revenue comes from the civil aviation solutions segment. Approximately 37% comes from the defense and security, and a small slice, 3%, comes from healthcare. So, not surprising if 60% of your revenues is exposed to the aviation industry and demand has absolutely cratered, you're gonna see some uh, pressure on the company's stock price. However, we also think that CAE will be one of the first aviation stocks to see a significant increase in share price. Forget stocks like Air Canada. Stocks like Air Canada have considerable headwinds, more so than a company like CAE. Remember, pilots still need to be trained. Even if planes are grounded, and travel isn't as robust as it once was, pilots still need training and they still need to keep up with the certifications. This means that even though demand will be diminished, revenue in CAE's aviation segment won't fall off a cliff like the 90% drop we saw at Air Canada recently. CAE owns a 38% market share in the civil aviation industry. That industry alone is expected to grow at approximately 5% clip over the next few years. Granted, this is estimates based on 2019 data, and that's likely to come down given the current pandemic. So let's just assume that this industry will remain flat. Even at a flat rate, the company is still very undervalued. In terms of defense and security, the company owns a small market share, approximately 6% of its addressable market. This means that the company has significant room for growth in this area. Finally, in terms of healthcare solutions, the company is just getting started. The current pandemic has actually highlighted CAE's potential. It recently received certification for its ventilators and the government of Canada has placed a pretty significant order with CAE for ventilators. And this is just one area where the company can shine. The company has significant expertise and can expand in the healthcare industry. Although it's not gonna have a big impact on the bottom and top lines immediately, over the next few years as the company grows in the segment, it could have significant impact. As mentioned at the outset, patience will be key. This is not for the defensive investor. There will be considerable uncertainty and CAE's stock price is likely to fluctuate in a pretty significant way. Bottom line, we don't know if we will see another economic shutdown. We don't know just how quickly demand for aviation uh, and air travel will resume. All we know is that demand has been obliterated. Companies like Air Canada are posting 90% drops in revenue. This does not look good for a company like CAE. However, we do know that this won't last forever, and CAE is well positioned to rebound. Its defense and security and healthcare segments will provide it a base and will give it some stability while it waits for the aviation sector to rebound. The company reports earnings on August 12th. It will be closely watched. We encourage investors to pay particular attention to guidance. What does the future hold for a company like CAE? This might provide insight and will be the ultimate deciding factor in whether or not the stock rises or drops post earnings. Regardless, if it rises or drops, we think that CAE provides excellent value at today's prices. So let's recap. Bank of Montreal, Sun Life Financial, and CAE. 
All three are struggling, but all three are now trading at pretty attractive valuations. Short to medium term, expect volatility and expect considered uh, continued pressure. However, over the long term, if your time frame is two, three, four years, you're going to do quite well with these three stocks. Once again, a big congratulations to Robert G and L Gorman on their Stock Trades Premium subscription. For everyone else, remember, you have 24 hours to make use of the discount code, which I'm flashing again, and is in the description below. As always, thanks for your support, and until next time.